spent many thousands of hours of my life in virtual worlds. I remember in 2011, traveling to the vast lands of Skyrim, decorating my houses while slaying dragons. I've shared large-scale one-off experiences with my friends in Fortnite, like movie trailers and, and concerts, things like that. I've opened loot boxes in Overwatch while on Zoom calls with my friends, hoping to finally pull that Mercy Valkyrie skin. Now these experiences all took place in shared digital worlds, where I was encouraged to be involved, invested, and part of a community of like-minded people. These experiences all took place in the metaverse, but not the metaverse, obviously. Now, I want you to consider what the metaverse is. We've just heard two, uh, two explanations or definitions of what the metaverse would be. But if you were to think about what you think metaverse means or what the metaverse is, the likelihood is that there would be probably 50 different answers in this room right now. And most of you would probably be right, even if those answers were different. Some of you may be thinking that it's a digital space where people interact, play games, and share ideas, much like MSN Instant Messenger was back in 99. I'm gesturing over to the, to the older members of the audience on that one. Perhaps it's the melding of the digital and physical world, digital interactions or transactions for real world benefits. Sounds a bit like Uber, Deliveroo. Now, the term itself was first coined by sci fi writer Neil Stevenson back in 1992 to describe a 3D virtual space. Now, clearly, this no longer serves its requirement of a modern definition, as 3D virtual spaces have, have been around since the early 90s in the form of primitive video games and, and chat rooms. Time magazine attempts to define it as the idea of a centralized virtual world, a place parallel to the physical. Now, while this description starts to start ticking the boxes that we need it to, it still points out that the metaverse remains an idea. Many different tech futurists and outlets include words in their definitions like concept, idea, hypothetical. There are many nebulous ways to try and describe what the metaverse is, and many companies seem to adjust their own description to try and fit themselves into a niche. Nobody has ever been brave enough to step forward and truly define what the metaverse is. That is until a company decided to change its name. In October 2021, Facebook changed its parent company name to Meta. Now this was in no doubt an attempt to place itself right in the center of people's minds when it comes to the metaverse. In reality, Facebook really invested in the metaverse concept quite late, far behind the shared world of Fortnite, World of Warcraft, and the proliferation of digital commerce through cryptocurrency and NFTs. Mark Zuckerberg says, In our DNA, we are a company that builds technology to connect people, and the metaverse is the next frontier, just like social media was when we got started. And yet, Facebook was far from breaking ground when it first launched the Facebook in Harvard in 2004 and then to the public in 2006. The internet relay chat was a thing in the late 80s, early 90s, and the first recognisable social media site, Six Degrees, was created in 1997, nearly 10 years before Facebook launched the public. And that site also allowed users to create profiles and make friends with other users. In my opinion, the new frontier of social media was spearheaded by MySpace in 2003, allowing an unprecedented level of customization, user-generated content, and social interactivity. Despite not being the first social media site, people did migrate to Facebook as the user experience it offered was clearer, cleaner, cooler, and attracting a much wider audience, being the first and only social media for many rich people in less tech-savvy age groups. In fact, the 35 to 50-year-old age group is the most populous currently on Facebook, and Facebook knows this. And it's actually interesting that this is the generation most likely to have played with these concepts previously and not take this new version of it. Despite this history of playing catch up, Facebook has been gearing up to this social media domination for many years through aggressive investing and in buying and folding in other social media companies. It has bought 78 companies in the last 15 years, but there's three that I want to highlight. First, in 2012, they bought popular image-sharing site Instagram. 
In 2014, they bought WhatsApp, the encrypted messaging app. And also in 2014, they bought Oculus, the virtual reality hardware and software developers. Now, the interesting thing is that when Facebook bought Instagram and WhatsApp, they left the branding on those companies as is, aside from some minor cross-profile integration. It would have been very easy for them to say, Instagram is dead, if you want to look at people's photos of their food, you need to come to Facebook on our new platform, Facegram. They could have done that, but they didn't. Similarly with WhatsApp, they've allowed that to continue going independently of Facebook Messenger, which runs parallel to WhatsApp. They did something different with Oculus. Now Oculus, as I said, is one of the chief manufacturers and sellers of virtual reality hardware and software. When Facebook changed its name to Meta, they also changed the name of Oculus to Meta. Now this hits at what Facebook truly sees as the main avenue into the Metaverse, virtual reality. Now despite all these examples of historic Metaverses I've given, the main thing is that they didn't take place in virtual reality, 3D spaces that the user digitally inserts their physical self. Now the newest headset released by Meta was called the Meta Quest 2. I think if virtual reality becomes synonymous with the marketable idea of the Metaverse, having a product colloquially called the Meta Headset would place them front and centre as the go-to place for people to engage with the Metaverse. Now this, in my view, is a very strong power move by Facebook that could be seen as them saying to other tech firms, hey, we are known for this, we are placed very centrally for this. If you want to be part of it, you need to come and play ball with us. This could pay off, or it could cause a further splintering of the Metaverse concept by companies who don't want to play ball with Facebook. But let's move away from the lofty plans of the big tech companies and look at the proliferation to the general public. And to many, the idea of the Metaverse is something to be feared, a little bit scared of, a departure from the real world and real world experiences. I'm sure for many, it conjures up images of people sat in their underwear, vegetating with headsets strapped to their face, having not showered for weeks. Now, for many, these ideas have their origins in, in sci fi and cyberpunk fiction and can be seen as pretty horrific. New technologies have always been treated at best with scepticism and at worst with vitriolic anger, fear, and opposition. As new scientists write, every new form of communication. From telegram to telephone and beyond has attracted criticism for increasing the pace of life. Novels were once condemned for ruining attention spans, and people once feared that cars that went at 20 or 30 miles an hour might deprive their passengers of oxygen and therefore kill them. Now, in hindsight, we can look at these resistances to new technologies as comical, but often there is legitimate reason for people's concerns, as is the case with the metaverse. If we glance back to the early industrial revolution, the Luddites were known for smashing up newly created mills and large-scale mill machinery. Now, this may seem initially like a, a naive form of anti-progressive vandalism, but in reality, it was about economics. Skilled, independent workers being replaced by larger-scale, often lower-skilled work. Now, is this something that could be a concern with the metaverse? Vodafone are predicting that smart devices will be monitoring our health or our brains by 2030, but would that be a suitable replacement for a visit to a health profession? Could Elon Musk's self-driving cars truly be a suitable substitute for a, an experienced taxi driver? All this is to say that a rational dose of scepticism is healthy when looking at new technologies, especially those that claim to be as life-changing as the metaverse. I couldn't quite decide how to close out this talk today as it feels about as broad and as vague as the concept of the metaverse itself. Am I for it or am I against it? Will the metaverse one day know everything about me? Do I want you to reject the whole concept? Could the metaverse raise my children one day? Have I in any way helped to explain what it even is? These are questions I don't know the answers to, but I want people to take away this. The world we live in is so digitally connected already to government databases, online shopping apps, web browser histories, online patterns of engagement, location data, everything about us is already known by these companies. 
So when learning about what may be yet to come, consider whether it's already a part of your life. It's hard to know what to expect as we bring online and offline worlds together. <coughs> but history has taught us to not dismiss concerns or weariness about this. The capital M metaverse, in my opinion, is not really anything new. It is merely an attempt by modern tech firms to make new a concept that has been around since the late 80s on a platform that's existed since the mid-80s. As is often the case, when you're late to something, you need to be seen to change it just enough to make it look brand new in order for it to be sold right back to you again. 